It is well known and well accepted in scientific circles that the conditions on our planet are extremely fine-tuned for life. The Earth is just the right size. It is just the right distance from the Sun. Our Sun is the right type of star. Our atmosphere has many rare and lucky features. The list goes on and on. Of course, materialists have a plausible explanation for this. There are many planets in the universe, but only a very few are suitable for life, and we are here because our Earth is one of those rare planets. At least, it would be a plausible explanation if the materialists' assumptions were plausible, that once you have a planet where conditions are just right, there is a reasonable chance that life would spontaneously arise and intelligent beings would spontaneously evolve over time. But we will see that these assumptions are not plausible. It is also widely accepted that not only is our Earth an ideal planet for life to thrive, but our whole universe is fine-tuned for life. The smallest changes in most of the basic constants of physics, the gravitational constant, Planck's constant, the charge and mass of the electron, and so forth, or of the initial conditions at the Big Bang, would have led to a universe where no conceivable form of life could have arisen. Stephen Hawking, in A Brief History of Time, writes, The remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. How do materialists explain this? There must be many universes with many different laws and constants and initial conditions, and we are here because our universe is one of those rare universes where the conditions are just right for us to be here. A.J. Leggett lists some of the fine-tuned properties of our universe in The Problems of Physics and concludes, The list could be multiplied endlessly, and it is easy to draw the conclusion that for any kind of conscious beings to exist at all, the basic constants of nature have to be exactly what they are, or at least extremely close to it. The anthropic principle then turns this statement around and says, in effect, that the reason the fundamental constants have the values that they do is because otherwise we would not be here to wonder about them. Paul Davies, in Other Worlds, writes, If we believe there are countless other universes, either in space or time, or in superspace, there is no longer anything astounding about the enormous degree of cosmic organization that we observe. We have selected it by our very existence. The many universes theory does provide an explanation for why many things around us are the way they are. Just as we can explain why we are living on a planet near a stable star by pointing out that only in such locations can life form, so we can perhaps explain many of the more general features of the universe by this anthropic selection process. This time, there is no evidence, there can never be any evidence, that there are other universes out there with the same laws of physics but random values for the basic constants, or perhaps random laws of physics also. So the explanation that our universe is just right because otherwise we would not be here to wonder about it is completely unscientific. It is interesting that those who for many years have ridiculed religious believers for imagining that there is another universe, another dimension out there with better conditions awaiting us, have now been reduced by the evidence for fine-tuning to inventing not one, but countless other universes with different conditions. By the way, a number of scientists, for example, biochemist Michael Denton in his 2016 book, Firemaker, and physicist Robin Collins in a chapter of a 2018 Oxford University Press book, The Argument from Physical Constants, the Fine-Tuning for Discoverability, are now showing us that the conditions on Earth and the laws of physics are not only fine-tuned for the survival of intelligent beings, they are also fine-tuned for the development of technology and for scientific discovery. Astronomer Guillermo Gonzalez, in his book The Privileged Planet, 
has shown that the Earth is not only well designed for human survival, it is also ideally situated for viewing the rest of the universe. These fine tunings are interesting because they cannot be explained by the conditions were just right because otherwise we would not be here to wonder about it arguments. We would still be here to wonder if the conditions on Earth and the properties of the chemical elements and compounds were not so finely tuned to make possible the development of technology and scientific discovery. The only explanation for these fine tunings is they are gifts from our designer to challenge and entertain us. It is often claimed that science is close to understanding how the first simple life form arose through entirely natural processes. To see how baseless this claim is, you only have to realize that with all our advanced technology, we are still not close to designing any type of self-replicating machine. That is still pure science fiction. So how could we imagine that such a machine could have arisen by pure chance, even given a universe with fine-tuned laws and a planet with fine-tuned conditions? When we add technology to such a machine to move toward the goal of reproduction, we only move the goalpost as now we have a more complicated machine to reproduce. Maybe someday human engineers will design a self-replicating machine like we see everywhere in the living world, but it will not happen in my lifetime, and it will not be simple, and it will certainly not show that such a machine could have arisen without design. Materialists believe they already understand how the first living things evolved into intelligent beings, but they really do not have a clue. To appreciate this, you only have to realize that what they are forced to believe is that the four fundamental unintelligent forces of physics alone could have rearranged the basic particles of physics on Earth into tall buildings, computers, and cell phones and airplanes and the internet. As my new video, Why Evolution is Different, brings out, the laws of physics are very cleverly designed and probably can explain everything that has happened on other planets, but they are obviously not clever enough to explain by themselves the development of computers and cars and Apple iPhones. This video also points out how similar the fossil record is to the development of human technology, with obvious similarities between each new invention and previous designs, but with large gaps where major new features appear for the same reasons. Gradual development of the new organs that gave rise to new orders, classes, and file would require the development of new but not yet useful features. So Darwinism could not explain the development of these new features even if they did occur gradually, and they don't. Here is a picture of three children in the 1950s. One of them is me, the other two are not. I saw the world from inside one of these children. I saw every picture that entered through his eyes, I heard every sound that entered through his ears, and when he fell on the sidewalk, I felt his pain. How did I end up inside one of these children? This is a question that rarely seems to trouble evolutionists. They talk about human evolution as if they were outside observers and never seem to wonder how they got inside one of the animals they are studying. They consider that human brains are just complicated computers, and so to explain how we got here, they just have to explain how these mechanical brains evolved. But even if they could explain how animals with mechanical brains evolved out of the primeval slime, that would leave the most important question, the one evolutionists never seem to even wonder about, still unsolved. How did I get inside one of these animals? For thousands of years, nearly everyone in every corner of the world looked at plants and animals and said, these things are obviously designed. I wonder who designed them. Only the modern scientist, overconfident from so much success in unraveling other mysteries, says, These things sure look like they were designed, and the deeper we dig, the more designed they look, but who designed the designer? 
Nothing can possibly be beyond the reach of our science, so if we can't explain where the designer came from, he can't exist. For many years, materialists avoided the parallel question of who designed matter and energy by saying they have always existed. But in the last century, it was discovered that matter and energy and space and time did begin suddenly with a big bang about 14 billion years ago. What came before the Big Bang? Even if before the beginning of time, as we know it, is not meaningful in a temporal sense, it is still meaningful in a causal sense. It's because out of nothing comes nothing. There has to be some first cause. Whether this first cause is intelligent or unintelligent, there is by definition no hope of ever explaining it in terms of earlier causes. Materialists can say that their currently preferred universe-generating mechanism needs no explanation because it is eternal, but we can equally say our designer needs no explanation because he is eternal. So why not assume a first cause that can explain what was caused, a well-designed universe with physical laws that are extremely fine-tuned for the magnificently designed plants and animals? and intelligent, conscious humans that arose on our magnificent earth.